We've all seen the ads on YouTube. Become fluent in three months or how I learned a language in one week. Is that realistic though? Today I'm gonna discuss this topic with a former Spanish student of mine who is now fluent in the language. We're gonna talk about how long it really takes to learn a language and we're gonna give you our best tips to learn quickly and efficiently. Welcome back, Kyle. He's here with us from Pensando Inglés. He's a former Spanish student of mine. How long were you studying Spanish with me, Kyle? Oh, I believe we were doing classes for over a year. Yeah, I think it was close to two years. Was it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was. That was a few years ago, but now you're fluent in Spanish. What level would you say that you have in Spanish? Between B2 and C1, I'd say. I, yeah. I could live my life in Spanish without problems, but I haven't studied the grammar to the point where I don't make mistakes, you know, because I'm comfortable with where I'm at and I'm not trying to impress anybody on like a university or academic level. Right. I'm not taking tests, so I am more than happy to be able to watch shows, watch movies in Spanish, and meet new people and have wonderful conversations. So my level is I can live my life in Spanish happily, and that's a blessing, it's a gift, and I love it. I think that's one of the things we have to take into account when we're learning languages, because a lot of times we have different goals, right? Like for you and for me, I just want to be able to live comfortably in Spanish and be able to live my life and talk to people and have fun fun and not be left out of the jokes but there's mm -hmm. some people who have to take tests and get certified in Cambridge and whatever to me I, I'm not interested in that but well if that's your goal and you need it for your job and university that's totally understandable absolutely if you're doing this for a job, like you said, if you're gonna work at a hospital, you're gonna have to specialize your vocabulary a little bit more than we do right. just to be able to walk around and eat good food and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm completely happy with where I'm at. And I think that's a, that should be the goal for the average person is to be able to make a joke in your target language. Right, yeah. And how long did it take you to achieve the level that you have today? So let's see. I, I actually looked up, I, I was prepared for this, and I did a little bit of research. I looked on italki, which is the site that we met on, mm -hmm. where, where you uh, taught Spanish and English, and my very first class was in June of 2020. Wow. Italki was really one of the first things where my language learning journey started. So I would say that I really started learning Spanish in 2020. I don't really count my couple months with Duolingo and things like that because I only learned a little bit of vocabulary maybe. But so I've got uh, three and a half years really, really learning and really uh, having Spanish be a huge part of my life. Okay, so let me just say another stat that I looked up earlier. You and I actually made a video on YouTube speaking completely in Spanish. Yeah. That was in September of 2021. Okay. So one year and three months after I started, we had a very fluent, yeah. completely conversational Spanish language video. So yeah. after a year, I would say that I was speaking very well, but we're going to get into this more and more of what it takes, but how long it's going to take you to learn a language comes down to how obsessed you're going to be with that language. Thank you. Thank you. It, it goes down to, it comes down to how much effort and studies and time you're willing to put into this language. And can I just say that for you to have the level that you had after one year, and even today, three years later, is impressive. And it's not common. I've taught students who have studied Spanish for year, studied English anyway, for years and can't maintain a conversation. It all comes down to how do you study? Is this a part of your daily life? Are you just reading from a textbook? Are you going to class once a week? How are you studying? So that's actually what I want to ask you. We were studying Spanish, well, I was teaching you Spanish for about a year and a half, two years. What were you doing outside of the classroom to support your Spanish studies? So that's an important thing to understand. Uh, the class that we were doing was important for me because we were able to practice. And that is he having somebody who you could practice with, right? Yeah. But if you're not doing anything outside of one class a week, you're going to be one of those people who are learning for years and not able to hold a conversation. Absolutely. So what it comes down to, like we've we've just said, is how much time you're going to put in. Are you going to be obsessed with it? Are you going to live it? 
So I dove right in, okay? I was spending hours every day. So I was blessed to have a job where I had a little bit of downtime at work so I could watch a movie in Spanish, I could watch shows. So I would say for that year, that year and a half that we were, that I really made this big improvement. On my worst days, where I spent the least amount of time, I was spending an hour consuming content in Spanish. And on good days, three hours, three and a half hours, because it was very important to me and I really wanted it. And when you really want a goal, you'll make the time and you'll find a way to get it. So I was obsessed. I yeah. was obsessed and the results spoke for themselves. You know, I actually love that you're saying that you have to become obsessed with learning a language if you mm -hmm. want to achieve flu fluency quickly. And I can say the same thing about my Spanish journey. I was obsessed with Spanish. I did everything in Spanish. I only watched shows in Spanish. I only listened to music in Spanish. I only traveled to Spanish speaking countries. Most of the new people that I met, I wanted to speak Spanish with them. I tried to, you know, hang out with Latinos. So I became obsessed with this goal of like, I am going to speak Spanish. Now guys, you don't have to be obsessive like us if whatever, you just want to learn Spanish as a hobby. But if you don't make the language a part of your life, you have to understand that you're not going to learn to be fluent quickly. Absolutely. There's a, a title of a book that I saw that applies to this, and it is Be Obsessed or Be Average. So <laughs> <laughs> I actually love that. That is my philosophy mm. with languages. Be obsessed or be average. And we don't want to be average. Yeah, And I mean, if you want to be average, that's okay. But personally, when it comes to learning languages, I want to be fluent. I want to have a conversation. I want to understand about the culture. I want to like the food. I want to listen to music. I want to understand the jokes. So Absolutely. it's it's living in that language. And guys, the hard work pays off when you can go into a restaurant and speak that language with the, the staff and really connect with these new people. Once you can start having these experiences, you will not regret spending the time learning language. Right. And so my question for you is, what's your first thought when you see videos or influencers promising, I'll help you become fluent in English or Spanish in three months. Learn a new language in three months. Liars. <laughs> Someone had to say it, y'all. It wasn't me, but someone had to say it. It's a lie. Not realistic. Even if you are obsessed, if you are completely obsessed and like diving in and being part of this culture and language like we, we're talking about now, three months, you'll maybe start to understand some words and be able to introduce yourself, maybe read a little bit. Guys, you, these people who are saying, I got... Uh, fluent in Spanish in three months. What they're not telling you is they took two years in college of it, they had a base, they grew up around it, or they already speak fluent Italian or fluent Portuguese. If you speak fluent Portuguese, sure, you could learn Spanish in a few months if you're obsessed with it. Yeah. But for me to say, I, I learned Russian in three months and now I'll show you how, buy my course, that's a lie. So that's a really good point too, to talk about is what language are you learning and what is your native language? Mm -hmm. Is it possible to learn a new language in three months? Yes, it's possible. But what languages do you already speak and what language are you learning? I studied Spanish for many years. I studied Spanish for four years in university four years in university, I moved to a Spanish speaking country. So I learned fluent Spanish. And then I took an accelerated Portuguese course and learned Portuguese in three months because I had the base of Spanish and because Spanish and Portuguese are such similar languages and because I was obsessed with Portuguese. So it's all of those factors. Is it possible to learn a language in three months? Yeah, it is. But learn a language that's similar to your native language or to a language that you already speak and put in the work. Absolutely. And I had a similar experience with Portuguese, having already learned Spanish and a lot of French. 
Uh, I did a, I actually did a one month challenge in Portuguese. And by the end of that one month, I was able to have a very basic conversation, but that was being obsessed every day, consuming a ton of content and already being fluent in Spanish and having a ton of French vocabulary as well. Absolutely. So pay attention to the language you want to learn. If you want to add another language to your toolbox, learn one that's similar, that's going to be easy to learn. But something that I always tell my students is who ask me, I want to become fluent in English now. How long will it take? I tell them if they're if they're referencing the three months become fluent in three months courses. I'm not going to promise you that I'm going to help you be fluent in three months because I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to my students in three months. You can maintain a conversation, a basic conversation. If you are at a zero level, you can maintain a base level conversation. And that's if you're putting in the work and studying the materials that I send you outside of class. If you come to class once a week, don't do the homework, don't practice with anyone, you're gonna take forever to learn the language. You're gonna take a few years and that's just being realistic. Or maybe never. Or maybe never if you don't put in the work. Well, this next question is gonna be really, really useful for you guys to learn a language and to learn quickly and efficiently. But before I ask Kyle and get his insights, go give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to Kyle's channel, Pensando Ingles, and let us know in the comment section down below, what language are you learning and how long did it take you to learn that language? So a lot of my students come to the first class and tell me that they want to speak like native speakers. They ask me, how long is it going to take me to have a native accent? What do you think about this? I have a lot of thoughts about this, okay? <laughs> we need to be proud of who we are. If you are a Mexican learning English, be proud of that, okay? Because taking the time to learn a new language is one of the coolest things you could do. It shows a huge amount of respect to the people you're trying to speak with. And I think that an accent is character, okay? I I love the way I sound in Spanish and I sound like uh, someone from the United States speaking Spanish. A gringo. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a gringo, but I speak Spanish. And when I was spending a lot of time around Mexicans, my Spanish had a lot of Mex Mexican vocabulary because different countries use different words. My wife is Colombian. Now maybe I use more Colombian words, but my accent is neutral. I don't speak like I'm from Argentina. I don't speak like I'm from Mexico because I'm not, and I don't try to be. I think focusing too much on your accent rather than focusing on acquiring new words, new vocabulary, a better understanding is a big mistake. And I think you should just be proud of who you are and speak, speak your language with pride with your chest out, your chin up, and be proud of how you sound because you're working hard. You don't have to try and sound like a native speaker because you're not. I'll never be a native Spanish speaker. I'm not. I'm an English speaker who speaks Spanish and I'm proud of that. I love that. Be proud of your heritage. Be proud of your origins. Yes, work on your accent so that people can understand you because it's true that if you have a conversation with an English speaker and you're speaking English with a complete Spanish accent, Okay, there's going to be some misunderstandings. We're going to have a hard time understanding you, but don't try to lose your accent. Mm -hmm. Your accent is your heritage. Your accent is your origin. Be proud of that. And also think about why am I so obsessed with losing my accent? Yeah, I agree. And I, I think, like you said, pronunciation, completely important. But some people will say, oh, I want to learn. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm a Spanish learner, so People say, oh, I want to speak with a uh, Spain accent or a Mexican accent. It, to me, it's more important to learn the words, but having sounding like you're from a certain country, don't be a poser, be you, be who you yeah. are. And it might be a disservice if you spend too much time trying to change your accent and you spend too much energy trying to change your accent when you could just be learning more and be focusing your energy on learning more words. And I think Part of the reason why I love Spanish language is because it's so diverse and in every country they have their own slang, their own accent. Even within that country, they have different regions with different accents. And that all is just, it's this whole diverse world, right? And we can acquire a little bit from every place. And okay, sometimes people aren't always going to understand us, but as Kyle said, it's just adding more character to our language. Absolutely. All right. So what are your top tips for learners 
to learn English or Spanish quickly and efficiently. I'm all about using your time well, okay? We're, we're busy. If you're watching this, I'm sure you have uh, maybe a job, maybe uh, a family, a relationship, hobbies. We've got stuff to do, right? School, you're in university, you're taking classes. We've all got responsibilities. So when you're driving in the car, you need to be listening. When you're going for a walk, listening. Another thing that is so important is enjoying it. Enjoying the process. If you are enjoying everything you do, you're gonna absorb that so much better. You're gonna learn so much faster. We know what we like to do in our first languages, right? You know I like martial arts. I have hobbies outside of language learning. So if I'm gonna watch a video on YouTube about martial arts, why not do it in Spanish? So integrate or add your, your target language into the things that you would normally do in your first language and you'll be successful. I love that. I totally love that. Do your hobbies in your second language. Absolutely. Make the process enjoyable. What kind of resources would you recommend? Like, would you recommend Duolingo and these kind of apps for language learners? I don't want to disrespect Duolingo, but it's not the most efficient one that I have found. What I will say is if you are just starting, your first day with a new language, Duolingo is cool. Duolingo is cool. right? Just take yeah. that step. Just take mm -hmm. that step. Yeah, because you are going to get some exposure. You're going to learn new words. And in order to use the more advanced resources, which are a lot better, you're going to need that little base. So Duolingo is not a bad place to start. And hey, it's free. It's yeah. free. I understand that sometimes we don't have the extra resources to spend on apps or things like that. So there's nothing wrong with using Duolingo that's free. Looking up a free course on YouTube, nothing wrong with that. And then later, maybe you're in a little bit better financial situation. You go take a class with Emma. You could go use a more advanced application. Okay. For me, the best app that I found is called Link. And that is the uh, polyglot Steve Kaufman. He's pretty big around the language learning world. Uh, he has a reading app called Link. And I've learned so much from that app. I love to read. So that's incredible. Uh, comprehensible input is incredible. That's what I do on my channel. For anybody who speaks Spanish and is learning English, come check me out. I have hours and hours of content there. And you could really, these days, you could find comprehensible input for whatever language you're learning. I've used Spanish and French. If you're using comprehensible input, you find whatever app works for you. Whatever I like might not work for you guys. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I love to read. If you don't like to read, Link's not going to work for you. Find what you like and use it. It's all about finding what works for you, right? Mm -hmm. Making it enjoyable for you, personalizing it for you, and exploring and just getting started. Get started with Duolingo and then start researching. There's so many language YouTubers out there that are creating content about learning a language, any language, mm -hmm. right? Me, Kyle. So just expose yourself more and once you start learning languages and you fall in love with the process i think that you'll never go back you'll never Absolutely. go back it's it's a whole world so learn that language just get started take the step don't worry about getting fluent in three months don't worry about losing your accent just go for it and have fun and fall in love with the process do you have any apps to recommend emma you know i personally don't use many apps like game apps to learn languages what i use a lot is quizlet i use quizlet to study vocab all the time just quick you know quick recall i use youtube i watch videos on youtube from people who i like people who i follow in that language i love netflix i watch netflix in portuguese because that's the language i'm learning and my advice is to find people to talk to so you can take classes with the teacher italki preply i used italki for a long time and i had a brazilian teacher so find ways to any way you can to have contact with the language so those would be my recommendations. Quizlet, Netflix, Spotify, YouTube, um, italki, Emma's Language Academy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, All right. Well, Kyle, thank you for your time. Thank you for your insights. My pleasure. Thank you for having me once again. I'm so happy to speak with you. It's been too long and I love this stuff. I love it. So I'm I'm more than happy to share it. And it's 
It's super interesting for me. I hope some of you guys will put this stuff to use. And when you learn a language, you improve your life. It's an adventure. It's a skill. It's a superpower. I totally agree with you. Language learning changes your life. And language learning is my biggest passion. And I just recommend everyone to try it out and see if you like it. So, and I think you really share that passion as well. So it's really helped us for the better. And I think that it can help all of you if you guys take the step and, and let it. Absolutely. Put in that work, guys. Put in the work. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one. So go watch that. Give this video a like, subscribe to this, ch this channel. Go find Kyle on YouTube, Pensando Inglés, and I will see you next week. Bye. Adios.